Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, here we are again, once again, uh, on this Friday night the Lord has, has given us uh, to spend some time together uh, studying his word in prayer, just trying to hear from heaven. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be uh, concluding uh, the teaching uh, on revealing who the Nicolaitans are that's recorded in the book of Revelation that we probably been been studying for the last, I guess, maybe four or five weeks. Uh, but tonight, if it's God's will, uh, I believe God's going to uh, give us enough information uh, on them uh, so that uh, I believe that uh, we can be confident if we take these things to heart, if we uh, hide these things in our heart, uh, it may be necessary for some of you all to go back and uh, look at some of the uh, uh, teaching from the beginning. Uh, that's the reason why I record them uh, and put them on uh, Facebook. They're also on my YouTube page. Uh, on Sylvester Hardy YouTube page uh, so that uh, maybe in the near future if uh, you or maybe you want to share uh, some of this information uh, with people in the future you'll be able to go back and and literally uh, pull it up uh, and let them listen to it uh, for themselves um, I've you know over the course of uh, our Friday night's prayer, I try to encourage um, you all to at least, you know, go on Facebook or, or YouTube um, if you found that this teaching was helpful for you and and and, and if it's going to help you, it, it will help other people. I try to encourage you all to go on Facebook uh, and just share or messenger message. Uh, some of these teaching to your friends and family members, but I've noticed uh, for whatever reason uh, uh, Too many people are not doing it. It won't take you uh, no more than just a few minutes to actually do that uh, It's just a, a press of a button and once you said it, and you know, it's it's up to them, you know uh, whether or not God will prick their heart uh, to 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 really uh, uh, Pay attention. I want to listen to uh, other study, uh, some of the studies we've had, you know, over the last few weeks uh, to help them in their their Christian walk. Also, I'm um, gonna start off real quick, like uh, just by doing uh, just a little praying, uh, just to invite the Lord in. Uh, I know He's always here, um, but just like we like to be acknowledged, you know, uh, the Lord, uh, you know, He He likes for His people. Uh, to acknowledge him also. And so I'm going to just spend just a few minutes in prayer. Father, we're just going to pause and give thanks for the scriptures and all things. Give thanks for that's the will of God concerning those of us that are in Christ Jesus. Father, we first want to just thank you for just, <laughs> just being God, just being such a loving, kind, long-suffering, patient, forgiving, Father, thank you so much for choosing us. Because the scripture, we didn't choose you, you chose us. And not only did you choose us, but you ordained us. That means you appointed us, Lord God, to bear fruit. That means, Lord God, you have chosen us for you to live inside of us through um, these vessels, uh, these clay vessels, Lord God, that you inhabit uh, through your spirit to live inside us, to uh, dwell in us, Lord God, to work in and through us to do your will and to serve your purpose, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for calling us to be your witnesses, especially this last hour. Thank you, Lord God, so much for allowing us to be that, I believe, with everything within me, that final generation of believers that you planted in the earth, Lord God, to fulfill all scriptures. We know that at this hour, because of the increase you've given man through technology, that the gospel literally 
has spread unto the ends of the world. And you said that Christ can't really come back until the gospel has been spread to the end of the world. So I know that's the real reason why you give man, you know, such technology to get communication all over the world at one time. It ain't about anything else, you know, other than the fulfilled scripture. So Lord God, you accomplished that. And so now we know that we are the last generation that you're going to use to work in and through to bring in this Latter-day Harvest. That means that you're going to work in and through us to bring in your last children that spread all over the world. They had every race, nation, culture, and creed. And you got us planted all over the world, just like you had Israel, like dew on the grass, Lord God. That's everywhere. Use us, Lord God, to bring in the Latter-day Harvest, to bring in uh, your last children. Because we know that Jesus can't come until your last son or your last daughter is safe and secure in your arm. So, Lord God, I just pray that you be with us tonight. That you give us eyes to see, ears to hear, but more than anything, Lord God, a heart to understand what the Spirit has to say to the church tonight. We thank you, Lord God, so much for the last few weeks that you've been sharing with us and giving us, Lord God, a deep revelation of who the Nicolaitans are uh, that you recorded, Lord God, in the last book of the Bible, those spirits that will be operating and reigning in the earth, Lord God, uh, right before Jesus come to judge the world and establish his kingdom. These group of people, Lord God, that you say you hate their deeds, that mean the lifestyle they're practicing, the things that they're doing. But not only do you hate their deeds, Lord God, you hate their doctrines. Those are uh, those man-made uh, doctrines that they have entertained devils, those fallen angels from heaven, and, and they've been given instruction, just like you have written your scripture through uh, your inspired spirit and holy men uh, to share your good news to the world. The devil's doing the same thing. He's using those fallen angels and himself, Lord God, to spread doctrines of devil, dark doctrines, devilish doctrines, those doctrines that opposes everything, Lord God, that's recorded in Scripture. So, Lord God, thank you for, in the end of the world, giving us a revelation as to who the Nicolaitans are so that we can be informed and we can be more prepared and that we can have eyes to be able to see them, Lord God, and, and we're going to do what you've commanded us to do. We're going to expose their deeds, Lord God, and we're going to expose their doctrine. Thank you so much. Uh, for over 500 years ago, Lord God, using Martin Luther, Lord God, to set, you know, your word free, Lord God, exposing their doctrine, the evil deeds of their doctrine, over 500 years ago, so that this word of God can go to the ends of the world. Now, Lord God, we thank you for raising up this generation, men and women ministers all over the world that you're using to finish that work that you started in Martin Luther, Lord God to finally expose the doctrine of these devils so that those that are in the light that truly have a desire to, that's in the darkness, truly have a desire to come to the light, Lord God, may be able to, for the first time, see the evil deeds that's operating through those spirits. Because I know a lot of them are your children. And Catholicism is the second largest religion in the earth today. Doing my research, it says there's about 1.6 billion people that are still in the earth that Catholic has in bondage, Lord God. Not to mention all the billions that they deceived, Lord God, from 313 AD until this present hour, Lord God. So, Lord God, I pray that you raise up men and women, that you prick the heart, Lord God, and that you let the spirit of conviction come upon our leaders, those that you have placed over the church, over all of our denominations that's in the earth, the Protestant denomination that you use to set free and spread the gospel to the end of the world. Raise them up, give them boldness, Lord God, so that they can do what you command them to do, Lord God, so that they can finish the work that you 
started Martin Luther to expose these evil deeds, Lord God, so people can be saved, so that they can know the truth, so that they can be free, Lord God. I just pray, Lord God, as we conclude this lesson tonight, I pray that everything that we you reveal to us through your word and through history, Lord God, will be enough, Lord God, to keep us rooted, to keep us grounded in this last hour. Because you say, even through your word, Lord God, they're going to rise up again. And this time when they rise up again, Lord God, they're going to have even more power they had in the beginning. In the beginning, Lord God, after um, the Pope declared that Christianity is to be freely practiced, Lord God. In 313, the Catholic got so strong, Lord God, that they had the word of God literally in bondage, not allowing it to be written in people's language so they could understand the Bible for themselves. So everybody had to come to them, Lord God, for them to convert scripture for them to plant another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit in the earth, Lord God, for all these centuries, Lord God, and it's still around, still operating, Lord God, still operating, Lord God. And they were able to make and unmake kings during those years, Lord God. And after Protestant movement was birthed and the church got free, Lord God, you were able, Lord God, to bridle them. But according to scripture, they're gonna have to rise up one more time the false prophet working with the, the beast and the dragon. That trinity, that big money trinity that's gonna deceive the whole world, bring kings all over the world together to literally fight against Jesus and the armies of heaven. So God, thank you for the wealth of knowledge you've given us, prepared us. Because you say when they come this time, they're gonna just come with words. They're gonna come with power. Because the devil's gonna give them his seat. He's gonna give them great authority and they're gonna be able to perform all sorts of lying signs and wonders, Lord God. The Bible says they're gonna be able to perform so many lying signs and wonders that if it was possible, they'll even be able to just see the very elect. That's those of us that you, your sons and daughters that you've given your spirit. You've given the Holy Ghost, Lord God, and you shared all things. But the power that they're coming in, Lord God, through signs and wonders, will be so powerful. You said if you hadn't shortened the days, Lord God, we wouldn't even make it. So, Lord God, don't let us take what you revealed to us for granted. We're going to need it for ourselves. And not, Lord God, just for ourselves. We're going to need it for the saints in the future. And I just pray, Lord God, that you've given us enough, enough, Lord God, of your word, enough revelation on those spirits, Lord God, to prepare not just us, but even our children, our grandchildren, because they're going to have to fight this same battle. All scripture, it has to be fulfilled. It can't be broken. So you're telling us right now what's coming, and you're equipping us with the weapons that we need to get the victory for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Okay. Let's get started with quick light. Uh, tonight we're going to conclude the study on who the current day Nicolaitans are, recorded in the book of Revelation, whom God himself said he hates their deeds and he hates their doctrine. The Lord warns us in the scripture that the doctrines of the Nicolaitan Catholic would get stronger and stronger at the end of the world, leading multitude to perdition. First Timothy 4, 2 verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, speaketh expressly clearly that in the latter times, speak of the time that we are currently in at this hour, some shall depart from the faith, talking about faith in God through his son, Jesus Christ, giving heed to seducing spirits, uh, to these fallen angels and doctors of devils, a books written by men under the inspiration of these fallen demonic devilish angels, speaking lies and hypocrisy, saying one thing and doing another, 
having their conscience or their mind seared with a hot iron, or they will literally be unteachable. So God warns us that they're going to have so much power that they're going to cause a lot of people to depart from the, the faith, not just because they're coming in word, but also because they're going to be coming in lying, signs, and wonders to just eat the world. Second Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3. Second Peter chapter 2, 1 through 3 said, But there were false prophets also among the people, even that there should be false teachers among you, who privately or secretly to bring in damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord or Jesus Christ, the one that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift or fast destruction. And many, the Bible says, not a few, and many shall follow their pernicious or evil ways. And because of this, by reason of whom the way of the truth or the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be evil spoken of, and through covetous or greed or the love of money, shall they with feign or fake words make merchandise or take advantage of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingered not, and their damnation slumbered not. Or none of these false teachers will escape in the end at the judgment seat of Jesus Christ, they will eventually receive exactly what they deserve, condemnation into eternal hell for all eternity. God commands us to contend and defend the faith. This is a commandment that God gave in the book of Jude. That's the last book that God wrote before he gave us the final revelation through the apostle John. And most of the time, the last thing anybody want to say, if they know this is the last time they're going to be speaking to you, is the most important thing they want to tell you. And this is what God speaks through uh, his servant Jew to tell us beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort or to encourage you that you should earnestly or sincerely Contend or fight and make defense for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints But there are certain men crept in unawares or they came in secretly and unnoticed Who were before or old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, uh, the, the lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, and denying the only Lord God, speaking of God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. These are some of the ancient spirit that the scriptures say that will be operating these false teachers in these last days, or days that we are now in. Jude chapter 1, verse 11. Jude 1 and 11. War unto them, speaking of these false teachers, um, the Nicolaitans, the current day Catholics. Uh, this is the spirit that's really operating in them, God revealed through his servant Jude. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. We know why, why, how, why Cain fell, because of the spirit of jealousy and envy. His brother deed was good and his deed was evil. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. You know, Balaam was a prophet, but he became a false prophet because he loved money. And perish in the gangsy of Cory, the lust of power. You know what happened to Moses and Aaron uh, family members. Uh, they were leaders in Israel, but uh, they weren't satisfied with the authority and power God gave them. They wanted to reign over God's people. The God had already chosen Moses, Mir, and Aaron, you know, to, to lead his people. Uh, but their family members got jealous, and we know what happened. Uh, God opened up the earth and the Bible said all of that was the first earthquake really recorded in the, in, the, in the Bible where the people went down, the Bible say, into the pit alive. That means they didn't die and, and went to hell, but they went down alive. And these are ancient spirits, and they're still operating in, in, in this false church even to this very day. Now, tonight we're going to expose some of their doctrines of devil. These are some of the doctrines the apostles warned us about through God's word that the Nicolaitans, the present day Catholic, will be planting in the church. The first one, listen to me very carefully. The first one, one of the doctrines of devil, is called absolution. That's one of the Catholic doctrines. Absolution, what is this? It's the remission of sin or the punishment due to sin granted by the Catholic church for the remission of punishment due to sin. Absolution proper is that act of the priest, talking about a man behind those little booths, the priest whereby in the sacrament of penance, he, talking about this priest, this man sitting behind this booth, frees man from sin. Meeting the booths uh, in these buildings called churches. And the Bible itself says, who can forgive sin except God? And we know the only somebody that can really forgive sin, you know, is God and Jesus Christ. But we know and we see it all the time. And the Catholic are still meeting 
through the week, through the day, taking their lunch break, and they're still entering into those uh, buildings, going to those false prophets, uh, confessing their sin to man, and, and think because they're fast to man, and man is giving them, uh, 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 like man got power to forgive their sin, deceiving them. The second one, indulgences in the Catholic Church, indulgences. An indulgence is the full or partial remission of temporal punishment for sin after the sinner confesses and receives absolution. On the Catholic teaching, every sin must be purified here, listen to this now, either here on earth or after death in the state called purgatory. When the coin and the coffer rings, and I just want to add this, this was something that was recorded you know, years ago uh, as a result of the Catholic doctrine of indulgence. Martin Luther critique, or he criticized of indulgence was not just academic. It wasn't just a folk to learn from it. The Catholic Church had great indulgences since the Middle Ages to penitent Christians as a form of absolution after they fulfilled prescribed conditions such as prayer or fasting. But by Luther's time, the church was selling indulgences outright for a source of revenue or for money. The indulgences document shown below includes a space to fill in the name of the contributor. As a priest, Luther thought selling indulgences weakened his flock's personal motivation to seek divine grace and exploit their sacred quest for salvation for the profane ends of power and wealth. Luther was especially angered by the flagrant hawk hawking of indulgences in German lands by the papal agent Johannes Tetzel, who is credited with the phrase, when the corn and the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory spring. For Luther, this monetization of faith was an abuse of church practice in this jurisdiction that he was duly bound to report to his superior. He did so on the same day he posted those 95 theses, including a copy of them with a letter to the archbishop Elbrus of Mainz. The third one is beautification, another, another doctrine of demon in the Catholic Church that's being practiced. is a recognition accorded by the Catholic Church of a deceased person's interest into heaven in capacity to intercede on behalf of individuals who pray in their name. Beautification is the plural, beauty is the plural form, referring to those who have undergone the process of beautification. They possess the title of blessed, before their name and are often referred to in English as blessed or plural blessed. The third doctrine of demon, canonization, is the declaration of a deceased person as an official recognized saint, like they got the power to really put somebody in heaven. Specifically, the official act of a Christian communion declaring a person worthy of public veneration and entering, entering their name in the canon uh, catalog of saints or authorized list of that communion recognized saint. Canonization is a papal, talking about the Pope, declaration that the Catholic faithful may venerate a particular deceased member of the church. Popes began making such doctrines in the 10th century. Upon that point, the local bishop governed the veneration of holy men and women within their own diocese. And there may and there may have been, for any particular saint, no form of decree at all. In subsequent centuries, the procedure became increasingly regularized with the popes began restricting to themselves the right to declare someone a Catholic saint. The fifth doctrine of devil, purgatory, an intimate state after death for exp exp expository uh, purification, specifically, a place or state of punishment wherein, according to Roman Catholic doctrine, the souls of those who die in God's grave may be satisfaction for past sin and so become fit for heaven. A place or a state of temporary suffering or misery. So purgatory, is like, they say it's like a place, I guess, in between heaven and earth where uh, these people souls i guess just linger and and those people on earth you know they can pray for them and they can pay money for them and these priests and these popes got power to, to pray them out of that place and to give them the right to go to heaven such a or it's just it's just so evil until it's it's almost it's despicable it's despicable six 
You know, Catholic has added other Bibles to the Holy Scripture. These are the additional seven books that the Catholic added to the Holy Scripture. You know, God said don't add anything to it and don't take anything away from it. Seven Old Testament books are found in the Catholic Bible, but not in the Protestant one. Catholic called them the Deuteronomical, literally second Canaan books. Protestant called them the Apocrypha, literally hidden, thus unknown, spurious books. These books include, and these are the books that God's people need to stay away from because they're doctrines of devil. These books include Barak, Tobit, Judith, 1, 1st and 2nd Maccabee, Wisdom or the Wisdom of Solomon, and Syriac or the Ecclesiasticus. Stay away from those seven books. They ain't got nothing to do with God. The doctrines of devil that they have literally added unto God's holy scripture to deceive people. They were included in the Septuagint, a third century BC. And these books now, listen to this very carefully. These books was added to the Holy Scripture in the third century. I mean, the third century, I mean, that was, you know, a couple of hundred years before Jesus Christ himself came, or before Christ, which is also proof that the Catholic Church is really the ancient church of the Nicolaitans. They were here even before Christ came. Exposing some of the false doctrine within the Catholic Nicolaitans Church that were exposed in the, that are exposed in the Holy Scripture that the apostles had to deal with. The rising power within the church. Like I said, they were here during Paul time. They were here during Jesus time. And they're still here. And these are some of the scriptures God, you know, through the Holy Ghost, inspired to write, you know, you know, to to reveal to us, you know, these dark these doctrines of devils. You know, so that we wouldn't deceive, and and and, and, and these scriptures reveal to us, you know, about you know some some of the people, not just the doctrine, but some of the people that the apostles had to deal with. That was part of the Nicolaitans uh, 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 church, uh, current day Catholic. Third uh, John, chapter one, verse nine through eleven. John said, "I wrote unto the church, but the atrophies, who love to have the preeminent, are." Superiority among them received us not. This was a man that wouldn't even receive the Apostle John, okay? Whereof, uh, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he does, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither does he himself receive the brethren, and forbid them that would, and cause them and cast them out of the church. And that's what those Nicolaitans were doing back then when 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 the apostle was sent you know, uh, uh, the message of the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to the, to the flock. Uh, they had men, you know, in power position in the church. And when they tried to bring the truth into the church, uh, these men was forbid the truth from coming into the church. And those people in the church that received, you know, try to receive, you know, the truth of the gospel, uh, they would put them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that does good is of God, but he that does evil has not seen God. They also perverting, perverting the scriptures uh, planted in the church. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15 through 19. God commands us to study to show ourselves approved to God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study for yourself now. But shun or stay away from profane and vain babbling or foolish talking, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as a canker or like a cancer, of whom it him meant. Hymenius and Philitus, these other two men, uh, plants, you know, the Nicolaitans church, uh, current day Catholic that was in the church back then, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure having this seal. The Lord knows those that are hid and let everyone that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Another, two other things they planted in the church that the apostles had to deal with. Signs planted in the church. First, Timothy chapter 6, verse 20 through 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babbling in opposition of science, falsely so-called, which some professing I have received and sort of the truth of the gospel, they believe in men, you know, called scientists, which some professing have ear concerned the faith. Grace be with the amen of the, the belief in science have led and is leading and going to leave a lot of people away from God, this son, Jesus Christ, and to perdition. The second, you know, spirit that they planted in the church 
uh, was philosophy. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 12. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 12. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therefore with thanksgiving. Beware, watch yourself, lest any man spoil you or take advantage of fool you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the elementary things of the world, and not after Christ. For in him, speaking of Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body. And ye are complete in him. We'll need nothing else which is the head of all principalities and power, and whom also you are circumcised with the circumcised made without hand, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, by putting on Christ. Bear with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the belief in the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. And those are some of the things uh, uh, that the uh, apostles had to deal with you know, through, you know, through the Nicolaitans, uh, current day Catholic, even in their time. Uh, the Catholic doctrine that the scripture warns us about saying Jesus, and this is so important. Most people have missed this over the centuries. Uh, it's recorded in John. John talks about this. The Catholic doctrine that scripture warns us about saying Jesus did not come in the flesh or as a natural man. What this doctrine in, in simple term is saying is that Mary is equal in every way to God and his son, Jesus Christ, perfect and without sin. So she is a goddess. So if she is a goddess, God or a queen of heaven, and she conceived and birthed Jesus, there is no humanity in Jesus Christ at all. This is a very deep death of Satan doctrine. It's so, it's so ambiguous until most folks don't even understand that this is what the Catholic are saying uh, when 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 they talking about when they talking about Mary making her you know without sin I mean if she without sin then, then she's a god okay and you know the Bible's all of sin falling short of the glory of God we know it's food in it but you know we know that but people that really don't understand it uh, they're being led astray and they're 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 following the Antichrist which is this church the Nicolaitan uh, the Catholic Church and they don't even really know it. Uh, first John, let me reveal it to you what John revealed, uh, shows it to us what was going on then and what's going on now. First John chapter four, one through three, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit will of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ, it didn't say Jesus Christ has just come, but every spirit that confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, uh, became a man is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh or became a man is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, where uh, you have heard that it shall come, and even now already it is in the world. And what John is telling us that through the Nicolaitans, you know, the spirit of Antichrist was operating, deceiving God's people was operating then, and it's still operating now uh, with the teaching in, in a real uh, 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 ambiguous way teaching people through their doctrine that Jesus Christ really didn't. I'm not saying that Jesus Christ didn't come, but through their doctrine, they're saying that Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh. So if Jesus Christ didn't come in the flesh, you know, to die for the sins of the world, that means that, you know, we perish and, and all our ancestors are those that have followed Christ that perish. But we know that is foolishness. John even has another witness for himself. Second John chapter one, verse four and 11. I rejoice great that I found thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which is we've had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandment. And this is his commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you walk in it. But many deceivers enter into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh or came as a man. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgressed and abide not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abide in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not even into your house, neither even bid him God speed. For him, for he that bid him God speed is a partaker of his evil deed. The truth of scripture that Christ came. Uh, in the flesh as a man. Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, 
That means he was God, but he thought of not Robert to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. We know spirits don't die in order for Jesus to die. He had to become a man. He had to become flesh and blood. Wherefore, God also had exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Truth and scripture that Jesus was fully man and fully God. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Paul a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, suffering to the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets and the Holy Scripture, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made now of the seed of David according to the flood. He was a man and declared to be the son of God, or was also God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. So the spirit, the, the scripture bear out that Jesus was fully man and that he was fully God. But the Catholic Mama doctrine, the Catholic doctrine come all of, come against the truth, which is of the gospel. Jesus, Catholicism makes Mary a divine being or a God. Catholic doctrine. Catholicism makes Mary a divine being or a God. You all have heard of this. It's called Immaculate Conception. Now listen to this. This is another doctrine of devil, uh, Catholic doctrine, Immaculate Conception. Roman Catholic dogma asserting that Mary, the mother of Jesus, were preserved free from the effects of the sin of Adam, usually referred to as the original sin, from the first instant of her conception. Although various texts in both the Old and New Testament have been cited in defense of this dark, it seems to have risen from a general acceptance in the early church of Mary's holiness, especially after Mary had been sought and declared to be the mother of God. This is a Catholic doctrine now. At the Council of Ephesus in 431, that's, that's AD, that was a Catholic gathering of the uh, Catholic bishop, and they was arguing over Jesus' divinity and his humanity, okay? Most theologians doubted that one who had been so close to God could have actually experienced sinful act. The Council of Ephesus was a council of Christian bishop convened in Ephesus, now present-day Turkey. 431 AD by the Roman Emperor Theodius, Theodius II. This third ecumenical council, an effort to attain consensus in the church through an assembly representing all Christendom, confirmed the original Nicene Creed and condemned the teaching of Nestorius patriarch of Constantinople, who held that the Virgin Mary may be called Christ, Christopticus, Christ bearer, but not the the Tacus, or God bearer. It met in June and July 431 at the Church of Mary in Ephesus and Anatolia. Nestorius doctrine, Nestorianism, which emphasized the distinction between Christ's human and divine nature argued that Mary should be called Christotokos, Christ bearer, but not the Theotokos, God bearer, had brought him into a conflict with other church leaders, most notably Syrio Patriarch of Alexandria. Nestorius himself had requested the emperor to convene the council, hoping that it would prove his orthodoxy. The council, in fact, condemned his teaching as heresy. The council declared Mary as the Otticus, a mother of God. When these false prophets got together that was reigning over the church back then, and not only are they saying that Jesus was a, that Mary was the mother of Jesus, but that she was the mother of God. I, like I say, this stuff is so demonic. Queen of Heaven is a title given to the Virgin Mary by Christian men of the Catholic Church, and to a lesser extent in the Anglican and Lutheran and Eastern Orthodox Church. The title has long been a tradition included in prayers and devotional literature and seen in Western art and the subject of coronation of the Virgin from the high Middle Ages, long before it was given a formal definition status by the church. The Catholic teaching on this subject is expressed in the papal uh, encyclical at Salia Regina, issued by the Pope Pius XII in 1954. It states, now listen to this, that Mary is called Queen of Heaven because her son, Jesus Christ, is the King of Israel, and the heavenly king of the universe. Indeed, the Davidic, the Davidic tradition of Israel recognized the mother of the king as the queen mother of Israel. Now, 
this so-called queen of heaven, that the Catholic, that's what they refer to Mary as, even to this day, that the Catholic attribution of Mary is an ancient spirit, listen to this now, that God had to deal with through his prophet, even in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 7, verse 16 through 25. Jeremiah 7, verse 16 through 25. Therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry, nor pray for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the city of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather the wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. That, that Catholic spirit um, back then was called the Nicolaitan, even before Christ came, that God had to deal with in the Old Testament. Queen of heaven, and Jehoi drink often to other God, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, said the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their faces? Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fear shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, upon beast, upon trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground. It shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offering unto your sacrifice and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your father, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, concerning burnt offering and sacrifices. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice. And I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in the way that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear, but walk in the counsel of the imagination of their own evil heart, and went backwards and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent unto you my servant the prophet, daily rising up, sending them. And there is confirmation that this. Uh, Nicolaitan, this Catholic doctrine God had to deal with in the old church. Jeremiah 44, 25 and 26. Jeremiah 44, 25 and 26. Thus said the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye in your wine have spoken with your mouth and fulfilled with your hand, saying, We will surely perform our vow that we should vow to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offering unto her. You will surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vow. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, all Judea, that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, said the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, The Lord God liveth. In conclusion, the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, a few days after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection and ascension. And as you can see through these lessons, the only other new doctrine comparable to Christianity at that time was the doctrine of the Nicolaitan, which I have, which had infiltrated not just the New Testament, but even the Old Testament the church to deceive God's people through false doctrine, established themselves in the church as apostles and claiming to be Jews, but they were not. And we studied that over the week. And according to recorded history, they began to establish themselves as the successor of Apostle Peter and therefore head over the church, the Catholic Pope. These things have not been hidden from the church, but our leaders that are over God's church in the earth are failing to do what God has commanded us to do, to expose the doctrines of devils perpetrated by the synagogue of Satan or the Nicolaitans, today called Catholic so that it can be brought into the light, so that God's people can be delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and the power of Satan and be delivered into the kingdom of light through the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Jude 1, 1 through 4, the last verse in closing. Jude 1, 1 through 4. God's going to conclude with the very verse he practically opened up with the last book before he gave us the final revelation because he know that this is important and he expect, you know, especially our church leaders to lead his church into this spiritual battle so folk can get saved. But for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, our church leaders don't want to continue to expose the doctrines of devils that's been operating in the Catholic church, you know, for centuries that God used Martin Luther to, one of, one of their own priests converted him to expose. And as a result of Martin Luther exposing it, the truth of the gospel finally got a chance to go to the ends of the world. And now at the end of the world, these doctrines 
are getting stronger and stronger and they're coming back again. And the reason why they're getting stronger and stronger and coming back again is because these leaders over our Protestant denomination, like I say, I don't know what is fear. I don't know what is the love of money. I don't know what it is, okay? Uh, maybe they just wanna, don't want to stir up nothing. But this is a commandment. In conclusion, God has called them to. Jude 1, 1 through 4. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved are kept in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was need for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should under contend or fight or defend the faith that was once delivered unto the saint. For there are certain men, talking about the Nicolaitans, which are not present day Catholic, but there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turn the grace of our God unto lasciviousness, a sexual immorality, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eye, even denying the only Lord God, our God the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, our leaders over, I know in our time, 